Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 28th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. It was one of those rare, perfect hawk watching mornings. We had sunshine, but we also had a nice layer of clouds to help with spotting. We had a moderate southerly wind that held off the lake breeze into the afternoon. We were able to sit in the shade where it was nice and pleasant, and we had a really nice steady flight of hawks overhead. So just a really nice late season flight here at Derby Hill today. Things are really coming full circle and ending as they began. Here's a species that we see more commonly in March. Here we have a plover with a double breast band. This is a killdeer. And to really make you feel like we're back in March, we had some flocks of migrating Canada geese. Now these are likely birds that are either failed nesters or ones that are done nesting already and moving north. And these were going straight out over the lake heading for Canada. This great blue heron gave a nice look as it flew low overhead. I'm amazed at the number of turkey vultures that continue to migrate as we approach two months since their peak migration period. We had 175 of them today, bringing us close to 36,000 total for the season, which is the highest ever. We had a nice flight of broad-winged hawks today, and it wasn't the biggest flight ever. We only had around 650, but it was a really nice pace. It was small to moderate groups. It was enough time that we could get good looks at them as they circled up and glided overhead. Here we have a juvenile, which most of the ones that we're seeing this time of year are. With the beautiful blue and white sky, I thought I'd include a beautiful blue and white tree swallow. We had a good flight of red-tailed hawks for this late in the season with 16 total. Notice the dark belly band and the dark patagial bars. As I was picking through broad-winged hawks gliding high overhead, this bird caught my eye and I said, wait a second, that's not a broad-winged hawk. We see a nice black and white plumage, including these dark squares in the carpal regions. This is a rough-legged hawk, and this is very late in the season to be seeing a rough-legged hawk. And in some ways, it's nice to get one like this at the end of the season because it's almost definitely the last one we're going to see. So in some ways, you feel like it kind of represents all of the rough-legged hawks that came before it this season. Here we have an eagle, we see a large head, we see that the head and underside of the body are brown with a lot of white in the wing pit area. This is a juvenile bald eagle, one of 73 we saw today, which is one more than the number that we saw yesterday. So two really big flights in a row. Here's a bird that I heard before I saw as it huffed and puffed its way past. This is a swan and we see an orange bill and a black face. This is a mute swan. And the past six springs, I was over at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch, where mute swans are extremely common. But here at Derby Hill, they're a little bit rare to see. So I've kind of missed them. So it's nice to get a nice flyby here towards the end of the season, even though sometimes we don't like them because they're invasive. Here we have kind of a tan or brown raptor with a long tail and somewhat pointed wings that are held a bit angular in this glide posture. This is a northern harrier. With today's bald eagles, we are now at a season total of 1,366, which is the most ever seen in a single season here at Derby Hill. And the bald eagle in this photo is the one that pushed us past the previous record. It was part of a group of eight bald eagles that were soaring together, and we were watching them and trying to figure out, okay, which one's going to be the bird that breaks the record, and it ended up being this one. Here's a juvenile broad-winged hawk that's looking a little bit ratty, but the one interesting thing is you can see the wing feathers that have already been replaced are the ones that have the dark tips. You can see the three feathers on each wing that have the adult plumage, the darker tip. Who was watching the watchers, them or us or both? Here we have a hawk with a long tail and a large head and wings held out straight, so a very cross-like shape. And we see brown teardrop streaking more concentrated to the upper breast. This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Like I mentioned before, most of the broad-winged hawks we're seeing are juveniles, but we are seeing a few adults, and you can see that even the adults are kind of messy as they're molting and replacing feathers. And here's one more bald eagle that gave us a nice look, and this one's got a bit of a split-tailed appearance. From the North Lookout today, we had 75 species. As we got into the afternoon, there were some clouds moving in from the west, and around 1.30, the lake breeze started to kick in, and it moved back and forth with the southerly wind, but eventually the lake breeze held on, so at 2 o'clock, we moved down to the south lookout, and it was partly sunny for most of the time we were there, but there was a thickening cloud layer moving in from the west as some rain was approaching. Here we have a small heron with a green and red plumage. This is a green heron. 
Here we have a Budia where we see a belly band and dark patagio bars. This is a red-tailed hawk, and we know it's an adult because of the red tail and the dark trailing edge to the wings. We had some cool non-raptor highlights from the south lookout. Here's a helicopter that was coming from the east, and then as it approached the fields, it pulled a U-turn and headed back the way that it came from, giving us a nice look. And here's a float plane that came overhead. One of my favorite bird species to see this time of year is the common nighthawk. And here's one that we heard as it called overhead and we looked up and were able to see and photograph it. And they just have a really distinctive shape to them with these really skinny pointed wings and these white patches. And of all the vehicles we expected to see driving down the road, this was not one of them. There was this forklift, that's what we called it, I don't know what the actual technical term is, but the guy from Lowe's had some materials to deliver, and obviously you can't turn a tractor trailer around on Sage Creek Drive, so he parked out on 104B and brought the forklift all the way down, delivered it, and then headed back out. It's just another one of those tiny moments that makes the season endlessly fascinating. From the South Lookout, we had 36 species. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 175 turkey vultures, 2 ospreys, 73 bald eagles. We had 9 northern harriers, 2 sharp-shinned hawks, and 2 cooper's hawks. For beautios, we had 648 broad-winged hawks, 16 red-tailed hawks, and 1 rough-legged hawk, and we had 1 American kestrel for a total of 929 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 15,178 and the season total to 93,436. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for steady light rain in the morning and then showers continuing into the afternoon, a high of 63 and light south-southwest winds. So it's a good wind direction, but it's very light. So if it's rainy and gloomy, then there may not be any raptor flight. But if it clears up, we may end up with a little bit of a raptor flight. So don't give up on the day, but it could end up being pretty slow if it stays gloomy. For Friday, they're saying cloudy early and then partial sun late with a high in the mid 60s and light westerly winds. And this is looking like the last somewhat decent day of the hawk watch. We'll probably get light to moderate migration. And for Saturday, which is the last day of the season, they're calling for overcast skies with rain showers and a high in the mid 50s and northwest winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So we're going back to last week's weather. Not going to be very good conditions to end the count and we'll probably be down at the south lookout. I would expect minimal migration, but you never know. We'll go out and see what we can see, and it's kind of nice to have a slower day to end it in case people want to come out and say goodbye. I know a lot of you like to see how the owl is decorated each day, so bonus points for anyone who knows what this bucket is. If you know, leave a comment and tell us. All right, what a great day of hawk watching. Like I said at the beginning of the video, just really nice weather and a great group of people to be out with as we're starting to wrap up the season. And the birds are not disappointing the past few days. It's amazing that we can get numbers like this this late in the season. So I'm really enjoying this last week of the hawk watch. And Saturday is the last day. So if you're going to come out and say goodbye, you're going to have to do it soon. Maybe we'll see you one more time out at Derby Hill. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.